John Jones vs. Daniel Cormier is one of the rare bouts where two fighters genuinely belong in the same division, but this isn't to say that there have not been other highly profitable bad blood matches in the UFC history. In comparison to Jones Cormier, however, neither of those fights were taken seriously, so sit back as we tell you why John Jones and Daniel Cormier were the greatest rivals in UFC history. First up, they got off to a bad start. Go back to the year 2010 with me if you want to see where all this animosity began. In terms of fashion, the Snuggie was like a blue iron fist that crushed all competition. For Jack 3D, there were no bounds to our creativity. Then Lady Gaga came along and got us all in a bad romance. In addition, Brock Lesnar, the undefeatable heavyweight champion, was defeated by a young man named Cain Velasquez at UFC 121. The scene we're setting is in the event's backstage area. There, Daniel Cormier, a former Olympic fighter who had just made his first big statement in big league MMA with a 62-second tap-to-strikes victory over Jason Riley in the Strike Force promotion, met a young John Jones, then a phenom of the sport but not yet a champion. Shortly after the meeting, Jones gave broadcaster Ariel Hawani his account of what transpired. Even though Cormier recalls the same conversation, his take on it is slightly different. Honestly, this seems to have started as a misunderstanding and and then gotten out of hand. It's possible that Jones, in an effort to make a good impression, said something that Cormier mistook as offense. And this wouldn't be the first time, that's for sure. Perhaps Jones was just being a douche and is now trying to cover his tracks as an alternative explanation. Moving on, Jones' big upset at UFC 165. Three years have passed. Jones' life has become somewhat routine after he became a champion. It was a cycle of battle, conquest, and repetition, until UFC 165 in September 2013, when a young man named Alexander Gustafsson stepped in to fight Jones. Jones took unprecedented punishment, but still managed to win by unanimous decision in the best fight of the year. What does this bout mean for the Jones-Cormier storyline, and why is it happening now? Let us fill you in. So, you see, Daniel Cormier wasn't supposed to be in the UFC 178 title fight at first. This incident included Gustafsson. Due to Gustafsson's meniscus tear, however, Cormier gladly stepped in. The previous vague feud suddenly became much more cut and dry. Due to his injury, Gustafsson paved the way for the rematch between the opposing players. But the most crucial thing is that he set the stage for the main event, which is sure to be an epic one. At UFC 165, Gustafsson pounded Jones to the point of almost upsetting him, leveling the playing field to the point where it could now firmly support a real rivalry. Gustafsson showed that even the great John Jones could be defeated on the wrong night and against the wrong opponent. Let's not forget the iconic stare down. Though it all began in 2010, this past August marked a turning point. It was on August 4 at a press conference promoting UFC 178 where the fight was initially scheduled to go down. The two men, Jones and Cormier, squared off. At first, the event didn't seem particularly noteworthy. It was just another stare down for the cameras. At that point, however, things started to go wrong. Let's not forget these stare-downs are tense and can lead to violence. A spark exists, whether obvious or not. A visible spark could be seen between Jones and Cormier as they stood nose to nose and touched or butted heads. Cormier slammed his hand down Jones' throat. In response, Jones threw a punch that went wide. The momentum from his takedown attempt swept them both off the stage, where they continued to struggle until security intervened. Although no one was seriously hurt, the incident still generated a lot of negative to press, the feud had now reached the public consciousness. Next up, their feud was then starting to affect their finances. The Nevada State Athletic Commission voted unanimously in late September to sanction both combatants for their roles in the August brawl. Jones was given a $50,000 fine and was required to perform 40 hours of community service. Cormier was fined $9,000 and required to perform 20 hours of community service. Jones testified before the commission that decided on those punishments, and he described a lot loss that was much greater than anything the state of Nevada could do to him. The dispute ultimately led to Nike withdrawing its endorsement of Jones. It was a historic agreement for Team Jones, but it cost the champion six figures in salary. This competition was, to borrow an expression, playing with their nest egg. This settled the final score in what has become arguably the most heated rivalry in UFC history. Since then, it has been building to a boil, with tidbits appearing in random interviews. Those keeping
digging an ear out will undoubtedly take in a lot more as fight week heats up. UFC 182 was the pinnacle event. Given that they are able to avoid elimination at the weigh-ins, let's look at what went down at UFC 182. If you want to know why the main event of UFC 182 was so heated, you need to know how these two men met inside the cage. Characters with enormous egos, hurt pride, and supernatural abilities populate this tale. During UFC 121 in 2010, when Cormier made a brazen claim, Jones retaliated and the feud between them has been raging ever since. The two-time Olympian was reportedly shocked when Jones, who is becoming known as one of the best wrestlers in the octagon, told him within seconds of meeting him that he believed he could take Cormier down to the mat. Cormier did not find this amusing in the least. Years of building resentment culminated in behind-the-scenes brawls, epic bouts of trash-talking, and the occasional shoe thrown. Even when things got heated, they always circled back to a matter of professional and athletic pride. As such, it was only proper that when the two finally met inside the cage, Jones made his point emphatically by defeating Cormier in a demoralizing fashion via a 3-0 knockout. When cornered, Cormier had no response for the champion, whom he had vowed to respect him. This was devastating for Cormier and all the people who had been rooting for him, but it was clear that this rivalry was far from over. Now, let's look at their second time in the octagon. One could argue that John Jones vs. Daniel Cormier too was the greatest mixed martial arts fight ever on paper. But did the outside world live up to UFC 214? After after two years of suspension and well-documented personal problems, Jones, who many consider to be the best mixed martial artist of all time, returned. With his return at UFC 214, he planned to reclaim his rightful place as the greatest fighter of all time in mixed martial arts history and the UFC light heavyweight championship. The current champion, Daniel Cormier, had been stopped by Jones in his only professional fight. So, it's safe to say that the entire UFC fandom was absolutely hyped for this duel to throw hands again. And why wouldn't they be? The stars went a long way back, and their intense history along with fighting accolades was enough to get anyone interested in the fight. They also disliked one another, by the way. Genuinely. Adding to this, how did the fight play out? Jones and Cormier put on a great fight, with each man having their moments. Many mixed martial arts viewers will likely never forget the emotional aftermath of the fight. Jones landed with more volume in the first two rounds, but Cormier was more active and appeared to land more damaging blows with his uppercut and right hand. Jones' hellish knees made him a threat in the clinch, but Cormier kept charging in and taking the fight to him by controlling his wrists. While different observers gave different stories for the first first two rounds, it's safe to say that it was even going into the third round, with Cormier possibly holding a slim edge. In a decisive moment near the middle of the third round, the deadlock was broken. Jones kicked Cormier in the head, sending him into the ropes, and then he dove in like a shark on a wounded fish. Cormier was knocked out by a left hook, a trip, and a jumping knee, and the champion was reinstated. Lastly, what followed right after the fight? As Bruce Buffer was about to announce the verdict, Cormier woke up and seemingly disoriented tried to walk over to Jones, but the authorities prevented him from proceeding. After the announcement was made, Cormier turned and left the cage, leaving Jones all by himself. Jones, overcome with emotion, crumpled to the ground in the cage after hearing the verdict. Jones proudly proclaimed to Joe Rogan, I made it back, man, in the ring right after the fight. There's nothing ugly about this scene. Cormier returned to the cage as the interview continued, but this time he was weeping. Although Jones could have continued their rivalry, he preferred to put the matter to rest. Jones thanked Cormier for being my biggest rival and motivator, and he walked over to give Cormier a kiss on the head. In spite of Jones' repeated attempts to comfort him, a still emotional Cormier refused to return the embrace. Cormier responded to Rogan's question about their rivalry by saying, if he won both fights, I guess there was no rivalry. Rogan, along with his various colleagues in the production truck, should think twice before interviewing people who have just been knocked unconscious in a prize fight. Such a scene unfolded after one of the years best fights, the two arguably best light heavyweights ever, broke down in tears. But that wasn't the end of the process. Jones spoke once more into the microphone. A loud, Brock Lesnar echoed from his lips, come meet me in the octagon and find out what it's like to have your arse kicked by someone 40 pounds lighter than you. Jones then put down the microphone and left the ring. That's a wrap for this video. Who is your pick out of these two? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.